For thousands of years, humanity, a vast proportion of it at least, has believed a story to be literal. And that story follows on to many other stories they've believed to be literal. But unfortunately at this point in our human story, we have become so technologically developed that our perceptions can't agree to these stories and the majority have therefore dismissed them as meaningless, as superstition, as dated nonsense, fundamentalism, etc. And yet the wisdom of the consciousness whereby which these stories were written is more desperately needed now than ever as we see humanity floundering and failing in the way that it's creating technologies without the wisdom and maturity to use them well. We are becoming enslaved by our own technologies and our lack of discipline over our pleasure centers, etc. And so I want to examine what happens if you put the technological over these ancient stories. You know, inside this dimension, this 3D dimension, we know now that this is arguably, potentially, like a simulation. And the source code that runs that simulation, we can say, comes from God. And that is the essence of creation, of God's creation. We can liken it to a computer program. That's why we're able to create virtual worlds. We can liken it to that, only it's so advanced beyond our comprehension. But we can liken it to a technology born from source. So I want to ask the question, in this 3D reality, this matrix we live in, was the arrival, potentially, of a certain human being written into this program by the source code, by God, the arrival of a change in the program of this matrix that also changed the DNA of humanity. And that man's name is commonly known as Jesus. And so hear me out, because for thousands of years we've believed Adam and Eve to be a literal story, some of us. But maybe it's time to believe it to be symbolic of something that matches with our technological understanding of creation, our scientific understanding of creation. Science being the dismantling of the creation that we are in. Adam and Eve lived in a state of consciousness that was almost magical. Their needs were provided. It was as if they had control over the program around them. They were so vibrant and potently connected to it. And for some reason, we have believed that literally there was a tree in a garden that this force of ever generous giving creation that gave forth for all creation an infinite potential placed there like a big red button that says don't push and said if you eat that you will die. And so a serpent, a snake came and spoke to the female of the two and said if you eat that you won't die. You will be like God, you will know good and evil. And so Eve went and ate from it. And indeed, they fell. They moved into a space where they knew good and evil. And they didn't die, their heart didn't stop. So obviously God's reference to death was not that. It was something else. Perhaps the death was to fall away from that amazing state of consciousness they were in, which was almost magical, where there was no sickness, etc. Because they had control with the, uh, with the will, the abominable will of their soul had control of this computer matrix, this creation matrix that we are in, not computer, God's co creation matrix. They were so connected they had control, so sickness wasn't a part of it. Now that's the first son of Adam, and the last son of Adam is said to be Jesus. 
And Jesus is said to have been in this world healing sickness, almost as if he was connected to that original state of consciousness, that original ability to influence the program of this 3D dimension, this 3D matrix. Adam and Eve starts with Eve being split from the rib of Adam. Of Adam. Adam's etymology comes atom to atom. Atom, if you split the electron from the atom, starts the multiplication of life, just as Adam and Eve started the multiplication of humans in the biblical story. So what if this story is not literal? In that sense, but what if it denotes something symbolically? And so I say this because recently you all know I've had a UFO encounter. I clearly with my two eyes saw a UFO. And it came at a synchronistic time where my consciousness was extremely high in frequency at the end of a 15 day water fast. And I was not alone, I was with my wife. And it came on the 25th of July, which is the Mayan day out of time. The Mayan day out of time is the time where the veil between dimensions or the spirit realm and this realm, the spiritual realms in this realm, is thin. And the Mayans I've had an affinity with because of 1111 in their calendar. I, as a human vessel, in consciousness, 1111 was an arising, a manifestation in, inside this this uh, matrix of creation that we are in that I was alerted to and followed blindly feeling somewhere energetically in me that I was supposed to and I followed it blindly to East Africa and many phenomenal things happened which I wanted to see good and love in the world and it, it manifest a village for disabled children, a family that's still growing of nearly 200 kids. We're building a new... It's phenomenal. By following this arising in, in the consciousness of this matrix of reality, which I am certain came from a higher dimension, playing with the program of this reality to synchronize this for this human vessel to see. The Mayans say humans were created by an alien species. There was an original creation of human in accordance with these creation stories, but it was interfered with by another worldly force. The Sumerian oldest creation story on earth claims that the existing humanoid that was here was tampered with by the Anunnaki to create a slave. What if the serpent is the arrival of that species. What if that species are the fallen angels of the Bible, and we've used the term angel, but this fallen dimensional force, who have arrived at Earth because of their adoration of sensuality and touch and pleasure. Beyond there, because of their pride and arrogance, that they feel, if we use this uh, visual framework that we have the 12 dimensions and the 12th dimension is the dimension of Christ Christ's presence is there the 3d is where we are and they have been caught in the fourth dimension and they wish to control the 12th dimension using their intelligence and technological advancement and the powers that we have denoted as spiritual, which kind of intertwine with technological. And they, in doing that, consume the resources of creation to try and advance themselves far enough to control the whole thing, to become God, as Lucifer wanted to be in the Bible when they were cast down to earth. What if this species needed to genetically hack the human to have this state of consciousness? So as their connection to the truth of God's wisdom was separated, so that their power, the power that Yeshua brought to the earth again of casting out 
demons or other dimensional forces or higher dimensional species from the human vessel, from the world, the 3D that it can influence, was se separated because of this genetic interference. And they move into a state of a dualistic consciousness where now the human vessel instead of its identity being in that voice of spirit is now creating its own self-image of itself just as lucifer wished to be god and separating from the will of unconditioned love the will of christ and in creating that self-image is judging and making things dual and using its memory to to keep building on this self-image and in doing so rarely ever being just present here where the will and the program inside the 3d matrix of creation can actually speak to the vessel the vessel needs to be spoken to by that program but now because it's been hacked genetically with by via its dna and hardware inside of it that that program still trying to speak to the human but the human's ability to receive it is blocked by the program running of a self-image what if the death is the falling away from the state of consciousness that was denoted as enlightenment into this dualistic state, the fallen state, as it is said in the Christian texts. What if that species that was hijacked by the fallen ones, the fallen angels, is in part who we are and was who we are until there was a change in the code of this 3D matrix. As we have. Until the arrival of a new human was decided upon. Until a connection to the highest dimension, the source code of all. Remembering that the 3D matrix we are in is having above it a fallen species, the prince of this world is Satan, the fourth dimension. And the fourth dimensional species is technologically advanced, so much so they want to try and become God through that. And so they are writing even into the, the God program changes that we can't comprehend technologically. But if you look at what humans are doing now, we're growing human skin over robotic hands. We are mimicking God's creation. How deep does that go? At what point when we create a metaverse can we just reprogram this reality? As we are starting to do where we reprogram DNA, etc. What if this higher dimensional force is rewriting the, the simulation of God's creation by hacking it because of their fallen state and their power? What if they are hacking this dimension as well as they have hacked the human vessel to now perceive based upon the 3D identity and not its spiritual origin, not its higher dimensional origin? This becomes a very interesting question because then you can say, what is this Jesus Christ about? Well, what if the higher dimension said, I've got a solution. We need to bring down into the 3D a new program. And this program will start overwriting the program of the fourth dimension. And the humans, where they have been genetically manipulated, where their DNA has been tampered with, that blockage will now be free. Because the program that's written into the reality will also write into the arising of the human organisms within there. What if Yeshua arrived from the highest dimension? Let's look at it in technological language, a program from the 12th dimension, a source code, a gift 
from God to liberate us from the oppression of the fourth dimensional beings that are writing upon this matrix we are living in, upon the original creation, which was nothing like it is now, which is denoted by the fallen world in the Bible. What if Yeshua came with that new program? That thanks to the love, support and sharing of the community that has followed us here on YouTube, we have been able to build a village for special needs children in crisis out in Tanzania. Our family in Tanzania is now made up of nearly 200 children. Most of these children have disabilities and most of these children are among the most marginalized human beings in our human story. You have seen the suffering on this channel, I won't go over it, but these children had no access to housing, medical care, some were abandoned and they certainly didn't get quality care, some of them. It is only thanks to the love, support and the partnership of persons in this community that we have been able to make this family a reality, that we have been able to bring these children out of the dark and into the light where they belong. To all who have partnered with what we do, thank you for your love and support. We simply can't do what we do without you. If you are not involved in our family and you are interested in helping us to eradicate this problem that we face inside the human story, eradicate this problem that these children are facing and don't need to face, then we have launched a new partnership program. If you visit www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership, you will see all of the details there. Ultimately, these partnerships help us to sustain our family, to provide everything we need to these children to make sure they are happy. And in return with that, we will provide you with regular updates and a newsletter every month as well, so as you can see exactly how your act of love and sharing is impacting the world and the lives of these children in the same way that I get to see you. Okay, that was all. Thank you for the love and support, guys. And what if in the whole time he was absent from the biblical texts, his presence was writing that program into others and into the matrix around us? What if this miraculous birth was a miraculous manifestation, a potent uh, creation from the highest dimension born into this one? What if, as I've said before, the sacred secretion. It doesn't matter who you are, if you know this or not. If you are living in the spirit, and here we can say the spirit is the governance of the higher dimensions beyond the fourth. The spirit is the twelfth, the Christ dimension, we can say. If you're living in the spirit and you are lit up in that state of godliness and love, your sacred secretion is risen in your body. I have anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions because you have lived righteously. Because you have lived not seeking and abusing the world and others for pleasure and you have lived in alignment with the original, at least a part of the original state of consciousness of Eden, that you have anatomically risen your chrism, your ictos, your sacred secretion. And that alters the frequency of what you are and now you perceive in a state which has been labelled before Yeshua by Buddha as enlightenment to see through the matrix. To see through the matrix identity, the 3D identity, to see through the 3D realm as a matrix and know that there's more beyond there, that there's a unity to it all. What if the original human their sacred secretion was permanently in place in Eden consciousness with Adam and Eve, atom, atom, atom and electron. What if the first humans were like that, the ones that were pre-genetically interfered with by an alien force, a higher dimensional force that manifests in this dimension? What if... What if the genetic interference trapped the secretion to the lower realms of the body? Meaning that the human vessel could never, in its frequency, align back to the truth of its soul. And therefore its connection to God was severed. And therefore it could only live by the flesh. 
It could only live by the perceptions of the human body and its technology, becoming a perfect slave at one point. Because if it could live by the perceptions of the spirit, the perceptions of the higher dimensions, it would push away slavery. It would turn its back on it. Here we see inside humanity people awakening and recognizing the slavery that is still ongoing, electronically, etc., financially, etc. They recognize it. Because the program that keeps you enslaved of the chrism staying in the lower is free. You have written over that original hacking that went on to Adam and Eve by the fallen species, the serpent. You've written over that program with a new program. And so now you perceive, because now your chrism has risen, you perceive reality in a different way. Now you perceive that which is slavery, whereas your ancestors couldn't because they were genetically designed to be a slave according to the Sumerians. What if the arrival of Yeshua was the altering of the program of the human DNA, of the very program of the matrix, to allow humans now to allow their chrism to rise, to allow humans in other terminology not rooted in the 3D uh, to, to know the higher dimensions, to allow the higher dimensions to become their identity, not only what they see, to walk by faith, not by sight, What if Yeshua brought the new human? Well, Jesus is said to be the final son of Adam. The last son of Adam was Yeshua. He was the last of that species, that race of human. He was the very last. And he started the beginning of the new human with the potential to walk in the light of the higher dimensions of spirit. And therefore, the man Yeshua, who came in to this program, was destined by those controllers of this matrix who have so much dominion here, because they are controlling the majority of humans, because the majority don't live by the identity, <coughs> excuse me, of the higher dimensions, but of the 3D. And by living by the identity of the 3D, the fourth dimension of the fallen ones has dominion over you. Because you feel unwhole, you feel unholy, you feel broken, you know you're amnesic of something, there's a yearning, there's something missing and you seek pleasure. And as you seek it, it's catastrophic because now your soul's connection is so minor that they can push you out of the driving seat of that soul which is needed to animate this body and take control of the vessel. Remembering that they need that soul in the vessel because the whole point is that they need a slave of creation so they can energetically take from you as well as physically at one point. Yeshua came as that new program, that son of God, that gift from God. It was inevitable that he would be killed. It was inevitable that he would be harmed because the majority of the world were living under the influence of the fourth dimension. Even those who said that they were of God, those who nailed him to the cross and demanded it would be so, the religious. Those who love God based on a 3D perception, so lack the love of the twelfth dimension, lack the love of spirit. Those we still see today living out that program of yearning for God somewhere inside them, but doing it through a 3D program of the perceptions of the early enslaved technology, we may be able to say. And therefore, still running the program. Dead. Because living, the, living in the fallen program, the fallen stirred. Dead to the spirit, not the heart is not beating. Dead to the, the love of the truth of a human's power. If that was so, then perhaps the physical manifestations of miracles can be explained because in Eden consciousness before humans were hacked, we didn't have sickness. Now you have this man who brings part of that consciousness and says, I have that consciousness in me. I have the original source code here. And so you're sick, I can get rid of that. 
Done. What if, therefore, Yeshua can be explained with that language? That from the start of there, now the sacred secretion, that ever so sacred oil of gladness within you, can rise to the top. And so now we have a mixture of humans, those who raise it and enter the state of consciousness, which is non-dual, into the gentleness of the higher love into the birthplace, the rebirth that Jesus spoke of. Not running a 3D identity program that they're reborn and lacking the cosmic love that comes when it's truly a rebirth, but have awoken that everything is one. And for unity is the highest truth and it's needed for unconditioned love. The 3D identity, the self-image that's programmed into duality, it's running on its memories. It, 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 it only exists in memory form. It doesn't exist any other way. When you feel immense joy here and now, is there, an, is there a character feeling it? No. You are joy in the shape that we have pointed out with the word human. You are joy manifest as that. It's only when you recall it that you create the self-image. I was joyful. Who was? Oh, the human vessel at another period of time was joyful. But we don't do that. We say I was and so we build a character, a self-image. People have awoken. Perhaps Yeshua rewrote the DNA, the program of the matrix to allow that. So now the sacred secretion can arise to the top anatomically and people can perceive the non-dualistic consciousness. And it's not that they don't recognize good and bad because I went into non-dual consciousness and it was very clear to me what was okay and what was not okay. I still had discernment, but it was coming from spirit, not from the voice in my head, not from the 3D character, not from the vessel that's thinking that it's been reborn, but has not. And so, this is why we have a mixture, perhaps we could say, of humans on the planet today who live by the flesh because they're still running under the old genetic program that was programmed in in the Garden of Eden by the snake and those who are living by the higher dimensions, not the 3D identity, but the, the 12th dimensional identity, the, di I, the, the dimension we can say is the, the origin of Christ, the Christ identity, the identity in spirit. And in doing that, greater works than Jesus you will do, for he will have gone to the Father, as he said, because the pathway is now open, it's carved, there's a channel to the twelfth dimension, and you can just work in there and expand upon it. What if the mix of humans we have is because some of us have gotten into the new program? We've written over the old program. And many are still living by the flesh and the 3D identity because they're still caught in the first genetic interference that occurred within us by the fallen ones. The second genetic interference that occurred is denoted, our upgrade in DNA is denoted by the arrival of Christ, of a man they called Yeshua perhaps. For this human organism, and all of its faculties at this point. Having witnessed all that I've witnessed, having moved in other dimensions, having seen the fourth dimensional forces that are oppressing us, I've seen them, spoken to them, and I've removed them from people. Yeshua said that when you adopt this program that he left, you will have the power to cast out demons. Your connection to the highest dimension will be so potent that you could write over the top of the program of this 3D matrix of creation that the fourth D is interfering with and therefore move them away from people, out of people, off people. Having witnessed in this reality with my two eyes an unidentified spaceship in a profoundly synchronistic time, having had beings that are angelic, made of light, Heal me in meditation, prod me in a location on my body and then have that manifest inside the 3D reality 
many weeks later, as if they had healed me in a higher dimensional element of my body, and that flow like a river took some time to reach the 3D. I don't feel it's very easy for me to separate what we've termed spiritual and what we can term potentially technological. In Kings, Elijah clearly could arguably have left in his chariot of fire in a spaceship that ascended like a whirlwind into the sky. The Book of Enoch, which is in the Ethiopian canon, but not none others, but is still a valid book of the Bible, clearly describes a spaceship, a, 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 some sort of flying craft, which we would say is a spaceship, a, a UFO, whatever you want to call spacecraft. I think it's not impossible to start asking if there were technological elements to what went on in the Bible and the people of the time couldn't possibly describe them because they had no reference, a bit like Plato's cave. And therefore, I feel applying this linguistic framework to the Bible, to Yeshua, for the attributes I have as this human organism talking to you, that to my level best tries to have no identity in the 3D, no spiritual identity, no identity as a, an Englishman called John, that influences my actions. Instead, I only want the highest dimension, the twelfth the dimension of Christ of Spirit to determine the actions and activities of my intelligence, to stimulate the actions and activities of my body and intelligence. I don't want to react to the 3D. I want it to come from there, as close to the source code as possible, because it is the, the code of this creation matrix program we are in, wise enough, if I keep with this linguistic framework, wise enough, to know what is best for this human organism and what is its highest good and best good. Its 3D perceptions doesn't know its memories, etc., because they're all flawed and programmed by a system which is equally as corrupted by the programs that were genetically influenced into us. And so I just feel that there is a great gift in adding this linguistic framework over this because it just feels better. It just feels better. It makes more sense to who this vessel is. I've seen the supernatural and many can retain the original, more romantic language of spirit and the supernatural. But speaking it this way, I feel like many more humans might just see something and acknowledge something. And so what if Yeshua was the bringer of a new program from source code that writ over the top of the programs written into the third dimension from the fourth dimension, the realm of the fallen angels of the Bible. And that code altered our DNA so as we became a new species of human because he was the final son of Adam, a species that has the opportunity to unite with God, if it so chooses, or to worship the 3D dimension and the 3D matrix that the 4D is creating and influencing by hacking the original creation. And this is why as many as possible, we hope, awaken to the truth and the freedom of spirit of the identification not with the 3D, or the 3D personality, or the 3D memories, or the sight, but with the new identity in the higher dimensions of your soul, of spirit, of Christ, of God. That was all. God bless, guys. Bye.